Hey guys, thanks for coming to my talk, We're Not the Bad Guys, Extending Your Influence as an SRE. The focus of the talk is how to actually drive cultural change within your organization to adopt the best practices and reliability standards you've been hired to set. But a little bit about me first, my name is Nikhil Uni, and I'm the co-founder and chief architect of Cortex, a tool designed to set objective reliability initiatives and track them throughout your engineering work. Our goal is to bridge the cultural gap between SREs and service owners. Before this, I worked at Billing Infrastructure at Twilio. So to preface the talk, I wanted to start out with a personal anecdote. My first job out of college, one of my first projects as an infrastructure engineer was to set up monitoring, incident response, and SLOs for a mid-sized startup. I diligently worked at it for weeks, cataloging their systems, setting up SLOs and alerts and runbooks, and talking to the right stakeholders to figure out relevant SLIs for our business. After weeks of effort, we finally had them in place. But then what? Teams slowly went back to their old ways, alerts were ignored, and even added more overhead as engineers recognized false alarms without fixing them and grew wary of alerting at all. Basically, my hard work amounted to nothing. Teams gave pushback on meeting SLOs in favor of product velocity, and we slipped back to our old ways, and I moved on to other projects. So what should I have done differently? I assumed that just setting up the right processes and guidelines in place would be all it took for engineering work to enact a culture of liability, but that's just the first step. There's a quagmire of uphill cultural battles that you must also face if you wanna make reliability a first-class feature of your product. So in this talk, we're gonna discuss ways that you can make reliability front and center in the minds of your developers. So taking a step back, why should anyone even care about reliability in the first place? You need to tie it back to the business. Concretely, a lack of reliability means broken SLAs, which can result in a literal contractual payout to your customers, system downtime, a Gartner study cites on average $336,000 lost per hour of downtime. Obviously, this will vary depending on your org, but it's important to get a grasp on what downtime means for your business monetarily. Also, poor reliability leads to bad experiences on critical user journeys. As a thought experiment, how much money would Amazon lose if their patented buy now button was down, or if it was even spinning for more than 10 seconds before the final confirmation button? Lastly, poor reliability leads to customer churn, which leads to future loss of revenue. But there's also fuzzier costs associated with poor reliability. A culture of constant pages will leave developers fatigued and more susceptible to longer incident resolution times. And incidents lead to entire engineering orgs stopping pro product development in its tracks to patch critical incidents, which takes away from product velocity. And there's a real number for all the combined hours of all the engineers that have to put their heads together to solve those problems. And of course, poor reliability leads to unhappy customers and poor net retention rate. As the first step of bringing about cultural change, you need to outline these exact costs as it's the greatest case you could make for pushing reliability as a first class citizen. Now that you've established the importance of reliability for the business, the second step of bringing about cultural change is to present your findings to leadership and build bridges between all the relevant stakeholders. Now that you have concrete examples of the cost of poor reliability, present this to leadership and get their buy-in. You'll need to make FaceTime with relevant engineering leaders within your org and come together to agree on reliability targets. These are the agreed upon SLOs and reliability metrics that'll save your business costs in the long run. A production readiness checklist, a list of non-negotiables for a new service to be launched into production, and also concrete deadlines for when your team, when teams should meet your minimum set of requirements. With this, you'll also need to build trust within engineering teams. Meet with individual teams and managers and convey these new deadlines and reliability targets. These meetings will not only convey the importance of reliability backed up by leadership, but will also build a level of trust between you and the service owners. Next, make it easy for developers to care about reliability. You'll need to make it a part of the engineering culture through automation and bringing it to the forefront of the software development lifecycle. Automate as much of your work as possible. This means building systems to catch failing reliability initiatives proactively. At the very least, you'll need monitoring and alerts set up for your SLOs, but this can also include systems to automatically notify service owners of all sorts of reliability initiatives, including other gaps in operational maturity outside of strict SLOs. The actual metrics you'll want to automate will vary depending on what's important to your organization, but all the goals outlined with leadership should be included in your automated audit of service quality. To actually bring reliability front and center, we'll need to pull it earlier into the software development lifecycle. Build systems that can notify service owners or comment on PRs about worsening SLIs. And for the list of non-negotiables for a service to hit production, 
even go as far as to block pull requests for services that fail to meet those requirements with appropriate buy-in from leadership. Finally, now that you have these systems in place, you'll need to actually track the improvements that you've brought to the organization. Find out exactly how SLIs have improved, how the number and cost of incidents has decreased over time, and how the product philosophy has changed before and after implementing your SRE best practices in your organization. Now that you've actually done the hard work, you'll need to prove to leadership that the extra work of making reliability a first-class feature was worth it for the business. And lastly, just as a shameless plug, this is our bread and butter at Cortex. We like to think of ourselves as a bad guy as a service. We'll automatically catalog services and their metadata and their owners. And on our platform, you can programmatically define reliability metrics and best practices. And then we'll do the hard work of notifying service owners and driving cultural change. If you'd be interested, feel free to email us at team at getcortexapp.com. And if you're interested in working on these sort of problems, we'd love to have you. So please feel free to reach out to us at recruiting at getcortexapp.com or you can reach out to me directly on my socials. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. So nice. we were totally unprepared for everything because you just immediately went for it. We didn't even have the chance to introduce you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, everything's cool. Uh, we uh, have to wait a little bit before questions are coming in because of a slight delay. So uh, I'm just going to shut up again and wait for the questions to come in. Okay. In, in the meantime, uh, Nikhil, will you tell us about kind of like your most important learning when you came up with this talk? Like, is there anything that you kind of, um, you know, learned in the, in the, uh, progress of developing it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I mean, our job at Cortex is to talk to SREs all day. So like we've experienced firsthand the sort of frustrations that come along with, I've been hired to do this thing, but nobody's listening. Or how do I have the sort of cultural impact to make these changes that I've been hired to do? And so this has like been a common thread that we've seen amongst SREs and even some security engineers and platform engineers. So that's like sort of the motivation as well as my own personal experience behind driving this talk. Um, and so bringing it to the forefront means, you know, building bridges between all these relevant stakeholders, but something that we've seen that's super powerful is the automation side of it. Like if you can make an automated system tell you that you're doing something bad, it feels like you're not the bad guy anymore. You're sort of outsourcing the bad guy to somebody else. And we found that that's been a super powerful like shift in how service developers treat reliability. Nice. Thanks for that. Uh, I think we have a question here. So I'm feeling this talk is about uh, site reliability engineer uh, influence. How did you go about building bridges with engineering? Yeah. Um, so I think like FaceTime and like the trust value is pretty important. Like it's a pretty not talked about aspect of, you know, building these bridges, but also like automating things like if you have leadership agreeing that these are what the reliability initiatives are and you have some, some bot that's saying like, oh, you're not meeting X, Y, and Z, it feels like you can trust it or like you, you should be doing those things more than if there's some engineer just kind of nagging you about it. Like, hey, like we need this by the end of the quarter. Um, so yeah. Cool. I have another question, like uh, being the founder of Cortex and then uh, I, I feel like it, you don't have the, this, uh, this battle between engineering and higher management because you, you can push SRE from the top. And then I, I would like to, to know like the differences and also the challenges of that. Uh, uh, it seems to be simpler, but it can also be hard, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like from the founder perspective, like, I mean, we're, we're pretty early stage still. So like, there's always this battle of like, should we just ship it out quickly? Like, would that be more valuable to the business? I, I think it's different for us at our level. I mean, we don't have, you know, strict SRE roles because we're so small. It's just every engineer does everything. Obviously we do care about reliability since like we know all about it and we know the importance of it. Um, but I would say like at our level, the focus is more about like getting things out very quickly, sort of like dealing with the repercussions later. And as we scale as an organization that'll obviously shift those priorities. Um, but that's kind of how, how we see it right now. Cool. Thanks a lot. Um, so 
I think this is the last talk of this uh, track. The idea now is to converge everyone on the track one for the keynote that Liz from Jones will give there. Uh, besides that, I think it, you still have time to participate on the raffles and the things that the, the sponsors are giving, like the giveaways. So be yeah. sure to check that. Go ahead. And there's Sorry. an official networking slot coming up in five minutes. So if you haven't met your new best friend yet, please go to the people section, schedule a meeting with someone, don't attend it like I usually do, and just use the chat so you can um, be just as shy as RE or engineer like we are all. Um, Nikhil, thank you so much for joining us today and yeah. for this great talk. Uh, it was really yeah, it was inspiring, I would say. I definitely learned a thing yeah. or two. Thank you so thank much. You. So uh, I also want to just thank uh, all our sponsors. So I'm going to take a deep breath to name them all because there are a lot. So it's Cisco, Instana, Epsigon, PagerDuty, Teleport, NS1, Blameless, Styra, Catchpoint, Stackpulse, HashiCorp, Rootly, Moonsky, Thousand Eyes, Voltex, Cortex, Transparent Talent, Stackhawk, MOOCsoft, and of course, Container Solutions, who pays our salaries. So we think they're the best. Uh, and also they organized this conference. So I think that was pretty cool. And as uh, Lucas said, this is the last uh, talk on this track, but we are going to introduce our final keynote with this Liz Fong, with who is Liz Fong Jones on track one. So see you there in at nine thirty. And thank you so much for joining Lucas and me. Lucas, do you have any last words? No, not really. I didn't have any. I really put you on the spot there, right? Is it yes. the very last <laughs> words you ever get to say? Oh no. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and uh, see you over there and have a great night. Bye.